Good morning. This is Dr. Scott Lively. It's January 11th, and uh, I'm in a hotel room on the road, uh, glued to my computer, uh, monitoring the news, uh, my emails, uh, hoping that something is going to turn this mess around, and uh, feeling more and more that uh, there's not much that could uh, actually pull this out of the fire. But uh, I've written a piece regarding this and a plan uh, for dealing with it, and it's titled, Our Red Pill Reality in 2020 Hindsight. The Matrix movie has spawned many a political meme on the choice of staying comfortably asleep in a fantasy world where one enjoys free agency and a meaningful role in shaping the future, or awakening to the cruel reality of being an expendable slave to a machine designed to control one's every thought and action. In the film, the protagonist Neo is rudely awakened to reality by members of a resistance movement who have broken free from the machine, and in a meeting with their leader Morpheus, is given the choice to remain free by taking a red pill, or to return to the fantasy dream state by taking a blue pill. He takes the red pill, and the fight for good, liberty versus evil, slavery, begins. Over the past four years, we the people have been Neo, and Donald Trump has been our Morpheus. The MAGA movement chose the red pill, the Dems, Never Trumpers, and Rhinos chose the blue pill. Today, the battle rages on the battle between the MAGA deplorables and the machine. But with Morpheus seemingly defeated, and only vaporous QAnon rumors, or the miraculous intervention of God, left to base our hopes for a restored America upon, our collective grasp of reality is being shaken by the machine's power to conform human perception to its narratives. Who can we trust, and how can we know what's real? I had written and submitted a very different version of this column last night. This is my World Net Daily column that I put out every Tuesday. Uh, but this morning I read Joseph Farah's critically important piece, The Night of Long Knives Textile and I'm rewriting my column in support and response to it. This election was, as we continuously reminded each other, a winner-take-all battle for control of the nation between hyper-polarized partisans. A post-election purge of the losers was inevitable, and we would be happy about it if the purge was removing Marxists from power. However, if we were doing the purging, our standards would be truth-based, and our tactics honorable and proportionate. Not so with the left. Truth does not matter to the left, only the narratives. And their leaders are by nature malicious, often sadistic people who excel at what Hillary Clinton, cynically posing as a victim, called, quote, the politics of personal destruction. Trust me, I've been through their meat grinder. This is going to get really ugly, really fast, and last for a long time. From here on, under their new relentlessly repeated revisionist narrative, Trump will be the American Hitler, and every deplorable a white supremacist. In their minds, and to the blue pill public, this will justify their every action against conservative speech, thought, symbol, organization, and person. The reprehensible rhetoric and tactics of the far-left Southern Poverty Law Center, uh, the hate group, will become public policy. Be warned, especially in the early stage, any militant bluster or bravado from Trump supporters will be characterized as hate speech and or sedition. Marxist brown shirts will be looking eagerly for people to make examples of. If you doubt me, just ask Adolfo Martinez, who's serving 16 years in prison for the unforgivable crime of burning a gay pride flag. How can the MAGA movement not just survive the purge, but emerge from it stronger when it finally wanes? Use your 2020 hindsight and consider what you would do if you were a Russian Christian during the Bolshevik takeover of 1917. Number one, the most important action constitutionalists can take right now is to fully document what really happened over the past four years. The fatal flaws in the Marxist plans about their are, are there lies about the election fraud and all of the other dirty tricks? 
and all the other tactics they orchestrated to take down Trump. The left will soon begin to purge the evidence from the public record, so today start getting downloads and screenshots of everything. Load all digital documentation on off-the-grid external hard drives and store them in EMP-proof containers. Make paper copies of the most important items. If you have skills, create media to disseminate the truth from one-page bullet point flyers to feature-length documentary films. If you lack the skills, volunteer in the projects of others. Number two, go low-tech at least part-time from now on. Get a landline telephone as a backup communication method. Export all of your electronically stored data and print it out, especially your contact information with fellow constitutionalists, and start keeping hard copy paper backups of everything that's important to you. Get back to using the U.S. Postal Service for some of your correspondence so it doesn't go bankrupt and deprive us of the only truly confidential communication method we have. Start using paper currency more often to counteract the push toward a cashless society. Start thinking about bartering among your friends and family. Number three, go natural. Start categorizing the things in your life as either natural or artificial and adopt the general rule of preferring the natural. The most artificial thing in our lives is the virtual world, which the elites want to replace the natural in all things because, as we're beginning to experience, they can exercise total control over everything in it. It is the Matrix. As a starting point for breaking free, I offer you my Declaration of the Natural Life Movement, a red pill. And you can find that at scottlively.net in the button bar under uh, the Natural Life Movement. Number four, go underground. In 2019, the Holy Spirit began prompting me to begin preparing to establish a network of underground Christian believers and congregations in the expectation that this final generation leading to the return of Christ would face circumstances similar to what the Christians of the first century endured. I formally launched First Century Bible Church in March of 2020, and I believe the current Marxist, Marxist purge of MAGA members will include the persecution of Christians. And I urge remnant believers to act accordingly. If you agree and can accept our model of unity in the essentials, tolerance, and all else, you are invited to join or, or affiliate with First Century Bible Church. And number five, join Swamp Rangers. If there remains any chance of saving America, in whole or in part, from Marxist hell, that can only happen from the bottom up through the actions of grassroots constitutionalists. I formed Swamp Rangers as a ministry of First Century Bible Church to build a national grassroots network and maximize our combined influence. We officially launched on January 1st and are now accepting members. Again, you can uh, find both First Century Bible Church and Swamp Rangers at scottlively.net. Come what may, never give up the fight for truth and liberty, but choose your battles and your allies very carefully. Anyway, that's my column for today. I wish uh, it were a uh, more optimistic tone, but I think uh, we need to be realistic. This is the, this is the red pill reality uh, in 2020 hindsight. Thank you, God bless you, and I'll talk to you again soon.